Hi, we have come to the last month of 2020, isn't it? I still remember how we greeted 2020 and now we're going to greet 2021, isn't it? How quickly the time has gone. The year 2020 is devoted to COVID. Isn't it? We all have in our mind this COVID. This was a great challenge in every field. Same was the case with teaching learning process. But now the teachers, students, every one of us joined hands and we have the different online platforms for this teaching learning to, go, to happen. This is going on. How quickly we learned these new technologies. We learned to apply them. Exams are going through online, everything through online. So when there was a challenge in front of us, we utilized that as an opportunity and we have evolved ourselves. How quickly the time goes. Time and tide waits for no man. It's an old saying. It's a proverb and very, very, very true. A wonderful proverb. Imagine that I'm giving you, to my students, I'm giving you all 100 rupees each. Just imagine, okay? I'm giving you 100 rupees each every day I'm going to give you. And I'm telling you, you can spend this amount as and how you wish. I will not ask any records of how you have spent that money each day. Today I am giving you 100 rupees. You can spend it to your wish. Next day I will give you, the third day I will give you, the fourth day I will give you. I am going on giving you this and you can spend it as and how you wish. But just one condition. What is that? If you start spending that 100 rupees on one day, and if you're getting, say, rupees 20 balance that day, you won't be able to carry it forward to the next day. That is, you have to spend the whole 100 rupees as you wish, but you cannot carry the balance to the next day. So what will you all do? That's right. You all will spend the 100 rupees effectively efficiently without keeping a single rupee balance because you are you know you are sure that that balance amount you are not able to carry to the next day so you plan it plan it out before sleeping you plan it out so next day i'm going to get rupees 100 how i'm going to spend it what will i do how fruitfully i'll i'll just utilize that my 100 rupees isn't it this thought will be there in your mind. And definitely you will work out that thought, that you will work out what you're going to do. That is very definite because you value that 100 rupees very much. Same way, God Almighty is giving us all 24 hours every day. He's not going to ask us how you, have, you are going to utilize it or how you have utilized it. He's not going to ask us. We can utilize it as and how we like, how we wish. But only thing is, you cannot carry forward the remaining amount of time which you have not utilized fruitfully. You cannot carry forward it to the next day. Next day, a fresh God is giving you another, God is giving all of us another 24 hours. Yes, you utilize this. And he never asks how you have utilized it. But are we utilizing those 24 hours efficiently, effectively, with great interest, passion and enthusiasm as we have utilized that 100 rupees? We have to think. And even without thinking, we can say, no, we are not utilizing it. Why? Or how we can utilize it. That why you can make it aside. That is all gone. We haven't utilized it. It's over. But now we want to. Now we have to utilize it. How we can utilize it? 
planning is needed like before you going to before going to bed you think how i am going to spend that 100 rupees same way you have to plan for your next day what i am going to do the next day next 24 hours is there with me you have to plan it out so planning is needed first now how to plan planning is not so easy always plan should be based on ground level realities don't plan anything that is supernatural to you you cannot attain it you plan things according to some realities you know your position you know how you are where you are and what you can do what you cannot do what are the circumstances that are blocking you what are your limitations and all you know it very well so plan your activities according to the ground level realities of yours that is very important otherwise that plan will be a failure now how to plan you can just put your priorities into four pockets i can say four quadrants your priorities some task which you have to do will be very urgent as well as important put it in one pocket another task will be urgent but not so important that you pin it in another pocket now third task will be not urgent but very much important that you put it in the third quadrant and the fourth one and the last one you put those tasks which are not urgent and which are not important so likewise you list down your task and you prioritize them and pin it in the four quadrants now you know which you have to do first next third fourth likewise you have planned your work that part is over now comes the most difficult part for all of us planning we all do so much and so many things we all plan now comes the difficult work you have planned your work now next aspect is you have to work your plan you have to execute these plans you have to work your plan so plan your work and work your plan you have already planned based on that four quadrants now next is you have to work your plan how imagine you have exams when exams are nearing you get the timetable plan is there you prepare your own timetable at home you have planned your timetable now you have to work it out you will work it out based on three aspects one because you are pressurized your exam tension is there exam pressure is there so out of pressure you're working your plan that is one that won't be much efficiently done that will be there for only for those exam days after that it's over next you do things you work your plan out of your interest and how this interest is created or it is rather generated maybe you have a very wonderful teacher who is teaching a subject to you in a very interesting manner so you get interested in that particular subject or in that particular topic and because of that interest you read beyond your textbook you go grasp knowledge beyond your textbook that is because of the deep rooted interest that you have in that particular topic it may be because the teacher has taught you very interestingly or maybe that topic you can relate it to your real life experiences but every topic and every subject of yours may not be interesting that doesn't mean that you can just ignore the other parts which is not interesting so at sometimes you will have to work your plan which you may like or you may not like so when you are doing things with interest you are working out a plan which you really like you enjoy it you relish it but when there are some tasks which you want to do but you don't like it and how to do that you have to get 
a sort of thing called as commitment commitment towards that work commitment towards the plan that you have done now how can we get this commitment as i've told you you can do task when you are under pressure you can do task when you are have real interest on that third is when you are doing task whether you like or you don't like based on your commitment and great saints have told this it's not me who is telling great saints have told that you become committed to a task only when you become aware of the consequences let me just tell you these are the words of great saints okay let me just tell you with an example you have suppose you are in class 12 you have already completed your 14 years of your school life or you are in the 14th year of your school life kg 2 years plus 12 years okay 14 years you are in plus 2 imagine now half of that 14 let us take 7 years the next 7 years where i will be or what i will be now you are a student after 7 years what i will be where i should be should i be a support to my parents or a burden this thought should be there in your mind how am i and as an individual going to contribute towards my society or towards my nation this should be there in you this is an awareness that you have to generate within you when you get this awareness and when you get an answer for this particular awareness that answer will fire you towards what is called as commitment so you start working out all your plans whether you like it or don't like it because you have that awareness that i have to reach in such and such area after 7 years so commitment comes from awareness and my just a humble request to the parents of my students you have to give your child experiences of real life so that they get out of this mobile mania at least a little bit they are lacking real life experiences now nowadays the students at least the parents can make them wash their own clothes wash their own vessels after having their food clean up their rooms their study table arrange things properly in a very pleasing manner in a soothing manner they can make the children to greet the guest they can entrust the students to arrange their homes during festivals so all these things brings in a kind of experience entertainment mingling social life and all is inculcated into the students and through these activities they get experiences real life experiences which makes them committed towards a task that is assigned to them this slowly slowly will engage in them or this slowly slowly will creep into their studies into their future also so wherever they go whichever task is assigned to them they will shine there like a star because they know that i am committed to do to do this they will reach there so when you are committed to do something you can easily work out your plan so i can say that the simple mantra towards success is planning your work and working your plan how to plan is based on the four quadrants and how to work your plan is based on the awareness and then the commitment that you do in yourself so my dear students now this year 2020 is going to end now next a new year is there in front of you to the parents to every one of us a new year is there in front of us we all have to be aware of what we are going to do in this next year and we have to be committed for that 
So my sincere prayers for all of you. Thank you.